Thank you. And welcome to our kickoff for World IP Day. Uh, the World Intellectual Property Organization, known as WIPO, established World IP Day almost 20 years ago as a way to highlight the important role that intellectual property rights play in our innovation economy. And the official day is April 26, but we're getting a head start here uh, with Sean Springs, and we're going to be doing another event in, on Capitol Hill on April 29th. This year's theme is Reach for the Gold, IP and Sports. And while we don't think about it very much, inventions have revolutionized the sports industry. Inventions have improved the speed, accuracy, and safety of athletes and enhanced the spectator experience of fans throughout the world. Inventions like the running shoe and protective helmet, Velcro, Lycra, AstroTurf, instant replay, and the yellow first and 10 line that is superimposed over the playing field on television. Cutting edge technologies like artificial intelligence and virtual reality are now being applied in sports. For example, Stan Honey was recently inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for his augmented reality tools that illuminate hard to see moments in the various sporting events on television, including the virtual first and 10 line that allows you to see the first down in football. Speaking of football, Today, we have the honor of being joined today by Sean Springs, an impressive entrepreneur, innovator, and inventor who is making football safer for everyone. Sean Springs is an accomplished athlete, having played 13 years for the Seattle Seahawks, the Washington Redskins, and the New England Patriots. Football seems to be in his family's blood. His father, Ron Springs, was also a professional football player and his two sons play it well, play as well. I just learned one in Georgetown and mm -hmm. one in Arizona State. Sean has sadly seen the firsthand risks associated with traumatic brain injuries and concussions in football. Inspired by the head protection used in uh, uh, baby gear, um, baby car seats, Sean developed the patented crash cloud technology, which is also trademarked. This technology is currently being used in sports helmets to protect players from severe head injuries. As the CEO and founder of Windpact, Sean develops technology relating to impact protection for all applications, including the military. Windpact was the winner of the NFL Head Health Tech Challenge 2, the NFL first and future startup competition. Windpack safety technology is designed to be non-intrusive, lightweight, and adaptable, so it doesn't interfere, interfere with the user's ability to perform. Let's watch a short video to learn more about this cutting-edge technology. I played 13 years in the NFL. My father played nine years, and now my son's playing college. So for me, it's important to try to make the game safer. The NFL has given a lot of entrepreneurs who have great ideas an opportunity to give back. At Winpack, we've won two awards from the NFL for safety equipment. It goes beyond the financial support. Just having access to some of the best medical professionals in the world, giving you insight to build better technology and better solutions was invaluable. Our technology is a unique combination of custom foam and controlled airflow. It's soft on low and medium impacts, and when you hit it, it tightens up. Leave these gaps in here for airflow. I believe we have a solution that can help address the high impacts that you see on kickoff, as well as the repeated every play impacts offensive alignment and defense alignment experience. We work with the helmet manufacturers to come up with a unique solution for their particular helmet. As an athlete, I understand the importance of safety, but I also understand the importance of fit, feel, and comfort. I feel great to know that I have an opportunity to give back. My aim is to make the game safer for the next generation of athletes, whether it's my kids or the players who came behind me. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to have a, a little bit of a chat here. Mm -hmm. I'll start off with some questions, and then we'll open it up to the audience in a little bit. Sean, you are a great innovator, and a, a most uh, inventions start with some kind of identification of the problem yeah. to be solved. Yeah. What was the problem you were trying to solve and what inspired you to solve it? Yeah, well, 
uh, my background, obviously, you had a chance to see, watch the film. And, you know, I kind of grew up in sports. I grew up in the locker room. And all, everyone always says, are you a Cowboys fan or are you a Redskins fan? Because most people know my father played in the NFL nine years before I did, before I was able to play in the NFL. And I just remember how important it was for me to be able to follow my father's footsteps. Yeah. And, and, I, and I just was sitting around one day and I looked at the helmet technology that I was wearing in my 13th year in the NFL. And that same helmet that I was wearing was almost identical to the helmet that my dad was wearing 30 years ago. Wow. So I was trying to figure out, you know, quite honestly, why hadn't helmet innovation changed in 30 years? And uh, around the time when I started to um, see the technology, uh, see the NFL, the NFL that got called on the hill by Congress and the manufacturers got called on the hill and Congress was like, why hadn't helmet innovation changed? And I had a chance to look and say, you know what? Somebody needs to not just talk about it, somebody should do something about it. And I was inspired because I was able to follow my father's footsteps. Now I have kids, I have three boys, my daughter, she doesn't play football, but I wanted my boys to be safer and have the same privilege I have if they wanted to go to college and play football and unfortunately be fortunate to follow and the grandfather and my footsteps to be safer. And it was all about giving back to the next generation of athletes that included my kids and all the others too. So that's what I wanted to do. And that's, was, that's why I started Winpact. That's so fabulous. That's mm -hmm. so fabulous. And Winpact, I think you told me, was founded in approximately 2010 or 2011. Yeah. And, and you were a phenomenal football player in the NFL. <laughs> and, and how was that transition from going from NFL to CEO of, of a tech company? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the, the transition, I think, for, uh, is one of those things. I was fortunate to have a dad who played in the NFL, so he kind of prepped me. He said, hey, when you get to about your eighth year in the league, uh, start looking at post-career. Because the NFL is just a, a platform. It's a stepping stone, stone, stone for the next Thing you want to do in life because obviously uh, most NFL players only play three to four years. I was fortunate enough to play 13 years, but I had to start thinking about what's next for me. And at the time, I was just thinking, well, I'll just do a little TV, do a little ESPN, and uh, Uber my kids around going to AAU basketball. I don't know how many parents there, I don't know how many parents out there, but a lot of times it's juggling schedules between football games and basketball practice and stuff. That was harder than playing in the NFL at times, right? <laughs> Trying to figure out how you're gonna make it from one AAU tournament over to a football flag uh, tournament or something like that. So I was um, just really just trying to figure it out and. And I, I had an opportunity for TV, but then I saw this technology, and I had always been fascinated by technology yes. because I was drafted to Seattle by a guy named Paul Allen, and we'll uh -huh. get into that, but that's where I first got the bug about I wanted to be a part of technology when I got drafted to Seattle. Awesome. And of course, Paul Allen was the former CEO of Microsoft, and yep. so you were immersed in it over there with him as well. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. When I got drafted to Seattle, um, first of all, uh, I was fortunate to play at Ohio State, great university, and I was drafted pretty high. And I, and I remember on draft day, uh, my family teased me about this all the time, on draft day, I cried. I cried on the NFL draft day because I was like, I'm from Washington, D.C. I don't even know where the state of Washington is. Like, who lives in Seattle at the time? <laughs> like, that place is like, all I hear about is like rain in Seattle. And... Um, Mr. Allen was buying a team, was purchasing a team, because the team was thinking about transitioning from Seattle to uh, L L.A. And they were actually practicing in Anaheim when I was drafted. And at the time, he had committed $300 million of his own money to um, build a new stadium in, wow. in King County in Seattle. And I remember they still had a vote on it. So <laughs> we, we drove around to like little small towns in, in King County, like Redmond, Washington, and Issaquah, and these towns. And, and he's like, I'm drafting this new exciting kid, and you know, we're gonna really change the culture of Seattle, which they done they today. Did. You know, Seattle's they're, they're good now, and I just remember <laughs> they're good now. When I was there, <laughs> they were terrible, him, right? right? <laughs> Maybe it was me because the Redskins was terrible too when I went there. So, <laughs> I, uh, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> we talk about that too. Oh God, don't get me started. Don't get me started on the Redskins, Dr. Hudson. I'm sorry, right? Um, and I just remember asking Mr. Allen, I said, Mr. Allen, did you know you would be a billionaire? And he said, Sean, it wasn't about becoming a billionaire. It was about doing something disruptive. It was yes. about when me and William, we had a 150 foot office in, in Bellevue, Washington. We wanted it just to change the way you communicate on the internet. And I was just blown away. And then, one, it, it, then once you start to think about that, 
I was living in Caroline Point in Seattle right down from the facility, and I remember, I had one buddy, I was like, man, this is pretty expensive to live here. I'm 21, 22 years old, and this, this apartment is like 2,700 bucks. How are you afford to live there? He said, we got the same boss. I work for Microsoft, right? So he worked for Microsoft. Then I had another buddy say, man, I'm going to work for this company that is uh, starting to sell books online. I was like, it's like, well, I don't know if that's yeah, a right. good idea, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> little do I know, right? Like, well, I guess Amazon is a pretty good idea, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, they got a lot of patents, I bet. Um, and then the other company was like uh, Starbucks. So I was in this, this, this culture in Seattle where it just felt like innovation. It was, I, w I was 21, 22 years old, and nobody really went to the games. They all went to the GeekWire conferences. Nobody went to Seahawks <laughs> games. We were terrible, right? But no, I actually have friends who were just in the innovation and tech world, and I, I wanted to be a part of that. So you were part of the right place at the right time with all yep. this confluence of energy and innovation around you. What other life, life learning or life lessons led you to be a successful CEO? Well, when you, when you, when you think about the NFL, um, I, I tell people when I was in the NFL, I probably had more attorneys and agents and PR people. Or I was a Nike athlete for 13 years, so uh, I felt like, you know, Winpack today is much like how I was when I was in the NFL. I had attorneys, I had financial people on it. And, but what I really learned is just in the NFL, the thing about the NFL, one, you're always competing. Every year yeah. you're competing for your job. But it's, you're competing in a healthy way because you got young kids who, 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 who are coming up and they want your job, but they also to respect what you've done and wh where you are and how you are. So you, it's a healthy competition. And, and more importantly, I, I think for me, it's just the atmosphere of everybody having a common goal, mm -hmm. you know, everyone having a common goal and they're willing to work to win. See, that, see that's the key about, I think, businesses and sports. Like, you know, everybody, not everybody's going to be Tom Brady. Uh, not everybody's going to be Sean Springs. Somebody has to cover kicks, somebody has to kick the ball, somebody has to block. Uh, you, you need people who are willing to work. So a lot of the lessons that I can continue to tell you about businesses is exactly what I felt when I was playing for the organization. Transparency is everything because you're sitting in there with your coach every day. Coach Gibbs would have a, a little pointer. Hey, man, like I remember one time I got ran over by Mike Allstott in Tampa, right? Yeah. I was, well, we were watching film and it's embarrassing because you got to, you know, in the NFL, you got to watch it with your coach. And I'm watching film and I get ran over. I was like, oh, man, that was bad. That was me, huh? Yeah, right? And Coach Gibbs goes, like, why? It's my starting corner who should be covering the receiver got ran over by a fullback. But it was always about we try not to expose each other. We try to right. trying to win and we try to make each other better. So you always was getting graded and you always and all and you respected your coaches because your coaches was like, you know what, I'm giving you good information, I'm giving you good advice because I want you to win, be successful, because we're all successful together. But now you're the coach. Yeah. So and now you're driving uh, forward the successful yep. company, and there are highs and lows. Yep. How are you pushing through those lows? Well, you know, it's it's, it's a challenge, right? I, I think as an entrepreneur and as a CEO, uh, I told Coach Gibbs at a golf tournament, I'm sorry for giving him a hard time, you know, because, you know. Now you know what it's like. I know now what the it's shoe like, is right? on the other foot. So she was on the other foot. So how you manage the highs and lows, I, I, I think um, part of being um, my journey to being in the NFL is you have to have the, the little bit of grit. You got to be yeah. resilient. You have to be able to sacrifice and do as necessary. So you, you celebrate the little things, the little wins, the success that you have. Um, you're going to get disappointed by by um, some of the things that you, you maybe not have won the contract that you want, wanted to win. You know, we have times where we won some and we lost some. You might have people who came into the organization who didn't feel, fit well, but the, the lows, I think you just manage by just saying, you know what, how do we learn from that? How do we push forward? How we continue to push and progress in the organization every day? And I think if you just have um, this atmosphere of people wanting to win and have success, success, you lean on each other at different times. And, that's, and I think that's important. You have to be able to have people in your organization that's willing to, to go through the rough parts with you as well as the great times, and, and you just continue to push. 
Awesome, awesome. Um, I understand that you've had support from the NFL yeah. and the Department of Defense in your new company. Yeah. Can you talk um, about that? Well, well and, and, you know, the NFL has been uh, a huge supporter of WinPact. Um, have a great relationship with Jeff Miller and the guys in, over the health division. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but the NFL has dedicated $60 million to make the game safer through um, taking care of the athlete and working with the NIH and startups. And, and, it, and, it, and, and I'm, I'm proud to say, um, because everyone knows around 2010, 2011, and all these lawsuits, the NFL was taking a lot of heat, and people go, well, this is the NFL just trying to make their brand look a certain way. But the NFL is really committed to making the game safer for the next generation of athletes. And the dollars that they're committing through the head health tech uh, challenges have been outstanding. You know, um, young companies like myself who may have great ideas, but you may need $150,000 of capital to just even get to the first article, first prototype. That's right. So the NFL is committed to finding new technology, new innovation, um, help support entrepreneurs bring them into the industry and so they've been they've, they've been great we won our first award 2017 down at the, in Houston was first in future uh, that was our first award working with the NFL and we won two cents the head health tech challenges and the great thing about working with the NFL you get to work with some of the best medical doctors in the world um, Dr. Myers from Duke University Dr. Crandall from UVA uh, you know, all the access and resources goes way beyond dollars they give you, but, you know, NFL is a powerful brand, and you get, to, and you get like a $5 million commercial, so that was That's pretty right. cool. That's right. Uh, <laughs> that helps build your brand. And um, in the military, uh, I, I, I'm proud to say my mom was, uh, was in the Army. Most people know my dad was a professional football player, but my mom was a retired Army uh, Master Sergeant, and so it's near and dear to me to protect our soldier. Um, in the NFL, we play and we have fun and we entertain people, but we have people out there risking their lives to protect right. us every day. And the soldier is um, working with the Natick Labs out of Boston. Um, this is our second year working with Natick Labs, working on an advanced combat helmet for the U.S. soldiers, U.S. Army, so U.S. government and uh, advanced combat helmet. So that's been outstanding because working with the Army Research Lab and working with some of the engineers is just second to none. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So how did you take your invention from prototype to patent? Yeah, 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 that, that's, um, that's, that's a great story. Let me back it up. Um, and everything is about relationships. I remember when I was in Washington, I gave tickets to a guy. Um, one of my buddies called me and said, hey man, do you have tickets left? And I said, I just have sweet tickets. And the guy was down, uh, with at a lacrosse tournament with his daughter and I gave him tickets just gave one of my buddies tickets and after the game I went and shook the guy's hand, hand and talked to him for a while and come to find out the guy was a president of a company called Safety First and he had baby car seats and and we just developed a relationship and we just started talking because you know he had sent me a uh, little Shawnee was I think my, my 11 year old was nine at the time he had sent me a lot of car seats and and joggers and expensive car seats and toilets and all that stuff. And I was like happy because I didn't have to pay for it, you know. You know? <laughs> like, oh man, like, all so, that so stuff. all the expensive yeah. stuff. So uh, I developed a relationship with a guy named Ken Duffy. And I say, Ken, man, what's so unique about this car seat? I mean, it's like a $600 car seat. And when I was looking at the technology, um, it made a lot of sense to me. It was like, it was like, First, the engineers start talking about strain rate independence and all the engineering terms and different things. And then I said, wait a minute, time out. I missed a few of my mechanical engineering classes at Ohio State. <laughs> like the Geico commercial, make it as simple so a football player could understand it, right? <laughs> he said, well, you should go out to Columbus, Indiana and meet with our engineers because with Kettering University and some of the people from the automotive space, we came up with this technology that was revolutionized way we were protecting baby heads and car seats and side impacts and cars. Went out to uh, Columbus, Indiana, and they showed me all their technology and what, how it was working. And, and the guy basically said, if you jump off the side of the building, you land on the airbag, that's disbursement technology. I said, I get that. Then he said, if you jump off the side of the building, land on mattress, that's absorption technology. The combination is a, is a combination of an airbag with a mattress inside. I said, I get it. Today, we like to say it's a unique combination of controlled airflow and a 
and polyurethane and all these fancy words I can use. I get all excited sometimes. <laughs> it makes me look smart when I'm talking to the kids at the Rutgers in Ohio State and this place like that. But, but I was just blown away with the technology. So one of the things that I knew that I needed to, and that's how I get to the patents, I knew the technology was already in baby car seat, but their patent was so tight around baby car seat. Yes. When I went to Cooley, my, my, my law firm here in Ruston, those guys at Cooley, they worked with their attorneys out of Chicago, and we were able to get the patents for everything else other than baby car seats. Good job. So, yeah, I'm happy about that, right? Good job. Because <laughs> all my clients, like, they gave that to you? Like, yeah, pretty yeah. much, right? <laughs> and, and just working with our attorneys, we're able to uh, get it. And they were great because, honestly, it was about the mission. It was about protecting kids. And they, right. and they worked with me. So from there, I realized, I said, could this technology be repurposed for something other than baby car seats? And initially, I was thought, football. Right. There's a series of car yes. accidents, protect the head. It made complete sense to me. Then I realized that impact protection goes way beyond what we're seeing in football. Hockey was dealing with this issue. Uh, baseball, he had a couple players getting hit in the head from pitches or um, hockey, baseball, any, all teams were sports and rec. Uh, automotive, we, you know, we're dealing with safety issues um, and military as well. So uh, we, were able to just, we were able to just, you know, say, you know what? We want to be ingredient technology, be able to spread it out to a lot of different things. I didn't want to be a football helmet company, but I wanted to be able to repurpose for all these other things. That's, so that's brilliant. What now, is this the, your oh, prototype? Yeah, no, this is a this is not a prototype. This is actually on the Ooh. market. This, this, so if you watch, uh, this would be the Yankees, my Sorry. favorite team, right? Yeah. yeah. I would have to ask Leon. He would know better than me. But this is a Under Armour catcher's mask because um, we had umpires and, and catchers uh, 2016, we had a few catchers that were suffering from getting hits to the face, as well as the umpire last year in 2017. I, the, the ball ricocheted off the bat, hit him in the face, and he stumbled back. So in baseball, they needed better impact protection. So this is technology. So as you can see, this is an Under Armour product. It has a wind pack tags and different things on it, and I can pass this around. But our technology is embedded into um, this catcher's mask. And the cool thing about it, uh, you guys get to meet Leon, he's here today, our director of development. He actually, we have like uh, design patents as well that goes along with our utility patent side. So it's pretty exciting to have um, great partners like Under Armour as well as uh, in baseball. I think we have two or three other clients that are coming with products this spring, they're wearing them. And, um, we're and again, so your patents are focused on the dispersive and the yep. compression padding that, and That's then the different um, variations or, or designs of how they're put into different kinds of helmets and stuff like this. Yes, yeah, so our, our technology is, is a multi-chamber system that has controlled airflow. There's a pad inside here and the app, and technology can actually be tuned for various applications. So in this form factor, you see it as in the catcher's mask. For the military helmet, it might have a different configuration and shape, um, as well as the football and what you would see in a lot of system for automotive. So to my guys, we focus on impact protection, and then the development team, once they solve for it, they can integrate it into different solutions, That's different gorgeous. applications. That's gorgeous. Well, you have design patents, you have utility patents, mm -hmm. you also have trademarks. Yeah. You have uh, Crash Cloud and yep. Wimpax are both registered trademarks. Mm -hmm. And um, what role have the trademarks played in your branding, and how did you develop those names? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, great technology. They have great technology and performance is everything in our business, but... Um, I'm a big fan of Apple and Steve Jobs and those guys. So you talk about you can have performance, but you need to have design and, and build a brand around that. So one of the first things, second thing I did was once I established that I need patent attorneys and work with the guys at Cooley, the next thing I went out and did was hire a branding company. Right? Uh -huh. I went and hired a branding company and we started talking about where do, what's the vision of the company. Well, the vision is to be the most advanced impact protection company in the world. So how do we brand some of our, the crash cloud is what we came up with the name with. So our branding company out of Boston, I really learned and they taught me um, about here's how we're gonna develop this strategy and roadmap because ideally we want the moms who go, moms and dads, but the moms who are going in the dicks and they're buying the, the, the catcher's face mask, that's an Under Armour product, like oh it has wind pack technology inside. Yes. Yes. As well as the same helmet that you wear in football, it's like I can identify with that. I know those guys are, are focused on solving major problems and, and, and real engineering behind it. So 
we want to be able to um, spread the word and so Crash Cloud needed to be trademarked as well as Swimpack needed to be trademarked to protect ourselves. That's so that's so exciting. It's so fun too. Right. Um, so what what advice would you give to other innovators out there, other budding innovators? Well, I, I think innovation, you know, I think we all are innovators, right? You know, if you think about why it was so important for me to come up with impactors, because I wanted to protect the next generation of athletes, including my kids. That's right. And I think, you know, a lot of times when you see innovation is out of just necessity or I have a great idea and I just want to, you just inspire it. So I, I would just tell other entrepreneurs, other, other people who have ideas, ask this question, why not me? Why can't I make a difference? I could have easily been the guy who put his name in on a lawsuit for the billions of dollars lawsuit for the NFL. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to see how can I help do my part, give back and provide a solution to make the game safer. So I would just tell all entrepreneurs and all innovators out there, hey, if you have an idea, go for it. You know, and then there's proper steps and you gotta have a team around you and people, and, and that's the toughest part, because a lot of times it's like, where do I start? You know, and, and I was fortunate enough to have like good attorneys and good people around me and say, hey, you should go get a good attorney first and then get a branding person and do things like that. But I would tell all entrepreneurs out there today, just man, just go for it. I mean, because, you know, we all have great ideas in the head and then you'd be like, man, I thought of that. Or like, how did you, yeah. you know, you know, I, I hear that the, the, these ideas are in, in the air. You just got to be able to think about it. One that I missed out and I thought about one of the innovations that happened uh, that I feel it was one of the coolest things that happened to innovation in sports while I was playing, the field turf. Yeah. It's kind of grass and turf. Yeah. So when we played, I thought about that. I was just like, I wish there was something like grass and turf, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> the kingdom, the turf, you know, the astro turf was hard and guys were getting injured and they had concrete under it. Yeah. But when we would practice outside in Seattle, it was slippery and wet. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Allen, we had the first field at our practice facility um, at, in, in Kirkland, Washington. And then he built it for the University of Washington because we were playing there for two years while the new stadium was being built. So I thought that was just the coolest thing ever that I got to see that type of innovation. Well, thank heaven you went to develop uh, this technology instead of AstroTurf or, or Turf. Right. Whatever you said. No, feel, feel, feel turf. It's, feel it's, turf. it's grass and like turf together. It's I like, get it's, it. It's I a, get it. It's a but new that style. wasn't your invention. So that I wasn't don't my need to invention. That. that wasn't my invention, right? <laughs> well, you are an inspiration, and yep. this is a fabulous, fabulous, important mm -hmm. invention. Well. So now I'll open it up to the audience and see if there are other questions out there. Hmm. I think there's a mic over here. Yep. I.O. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I can do that. I would say, um, so what was the, your biggest um, failure or setback that you learned your biggest lesson from? Um, I, I think something that, you know, as an entrepreneur and CEO, when you're building a team, when you build a team in the NFL, like a Patriots organization is the best, I think, at building teams. You know, everybody comes in, and regardless of your background, because you want diverse people, right? You want people from all walks of life. The Patriots, you say, hey, this is the Patriot way, this is how we're gonna do it. <laughs> and in football, you just got, you get paid a lot of money, and you gotta do it, right? <laughs> but in, when building a team, one of the lessons I learned, you gotta have the right personalities, mix of personalities and people you work with so that you know, because some person might be really, really good with, with doing this, but they're real analytical, and this person might be more of a design. So it's a fine balance of getting the right team members and the right people. And that's, and that's probably been one of the, the best lessons I have, because in the NFL, it's like, if I put you on this team, just do your job. They don't care about title. They just care about your function, and you just win. Like, it does not matter your title. You could be the most important person at the Redskins Park right now is Miss BJ and she's the front desk person. And I promise you if the Redskins would have let her go, the team would have walked out. Wow. They would have quit. Because all the guys like, hey, Miss BJ, I need some tickets for this or this. Whatever you needed, I think Miss BJ was like a genie. She knew everything. So 
that was a challenge for me, or yeah. still, still a learning lesson, yeah. building the right team and building the right, because you want to create this atmosphere of um, a family, I believe. Yes. The, 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 the organizations that I've seen have the most success is when people uh, are willing to challenge each other, but willing to uh, lift each other up, provide a service to others, build people up, and really create that atmosphere so that everyone's success. I tell my people, especially in innovation, and when area you're trying to innovate, I want people to try things. I want you to fail. I want you to fail fast, and I want you to learn from it and just keep moving. Let's go. Yeah. And you know, you 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 want to encourage that. What are you most proud of at Winpack? Um, what I'm most proud of at Winpack, I, I think I'm most proud of. A lot of times, people see the impact that in in resolve of the padding system. The things that I'm, I'm most proud of it is, is that we're the way we go about developing. Uh, from the concept developing using engineering principles that we have of finite element analysis because when I first got into the space I would see guys at these different helmet companies they put a piece of pad in the helmet and they drop it yeah. and I thought that was so antiquated and old right but now we're starting to bring in uh, uh, FEA modeling and just making it uh, more faster or quicker to understand. So, so you brought in more efficiency, more efficiency, and, and more innovation, more technology, innovation into, right. the, into the process, and, into the and, design process, and, and more technology into the design process that in combination of people who get it, who have the experiences, who care to have a not only a, a solution that performs well, but also looks good. So look that's good. what I'm most, I'm most excited about the whole process and how we do things. Awesome. Kind of like how Nike and, you know, those guys brought in a new way of running. I, I love it. That's true. Question. Yes, I'm a librarian, and I've worked with entrepreneurs in public libraries in mm -hmm. Missouri. And I had a question. Did you go from the prototype to your product on the market using a provisional patent? Did you do the design patent first before the utility? Because that's often a big question that entrepreneurs have. Yeah, we, we, we had our utility patent first. And through the process, and here's a, le a lesson learned for us, through the process, there's times where, and here's where we got to get better and build more muscle as a team around it. Because our guys are working. So as an ingredient brand, we work with people who've already been in the space 40 years, right? Shut has been building helmets for 50 years, um, you know, Automotive guys have been, been building headliners for a long time. Um, we start off with a utility patent, but as we go through the process, the guys have come up with beautiful designs or things that we, we have to mark and say, you know what, this could be a design patent. So one of the things that I, over this next year uh, going forward for Winpack, want to build that muscle around like how do we, some of them are just concepts and ideas, but some of them are real patentable design patents that we should patent and get better at. And so we always start off with it. We started with our base technology. Then during the process, we might come up with a design patent as well. So, and, we, and we're going to get better with that. Very good. Sean, thank you. As a parent of kids who play ice hockey, and it's mm -hmm. not always easy to know when they've been hit, you know, mm -hmm. where the concussion's minor or concussion's bad. How do you know when your technology's working? Well, I, I will say this. Um, I will say this. I don't think there's, and maybe I'm wrong, I don't know if in our lifetime of anyone, and you can ask Dr. Hudson this, she's right here, she's concussion specialist, she's not. I don't know if there's anyone in our lifetime who can say they're going to be able to stop from kids or anyone getting a concussion. I think there's going to be a lot of technologies like myself as we get smarter to continue and improve it. So everything that we go through when we're solving for a helmet or chest protector, whatever, everything has to go through a standard. And all you can do is perform your best to the standard. Uh, one of the standards that, or some of the tests that change the industry is, are you familiar with the Virginia Tech star rating system? Well, for those out there who don't know, Virginia Tech was collecting data for 15, 12 to 15 years of impacts, of on the field impacts. And then I think one day, one of the parents of a recruit came to him and said, what are you guys doing with all this data, right? And they said, well, hmm, that's interesting. We, <laughs> you know, like, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. So they came up with a, a Virginia Tech star rating, and it's, it's kind of like, I guess, a baseline. Or what's the best way to say it? It's a baseline for, and Dr. Hudson might can explain it better, but baseline of like likelihood of getting a concussion. 
And so the Virginia Tech rating started, to, was the first time that people started to uh, rate the helmets. So we always have to, whether it's the United States Army for the Advanced Combat Helmet, you're going through rigorous testing at Army Research Lab, at NADIC, all these third parties. So what you try to do is reduce the peak forces, G-forces to the head. And our technology is going to reduce and, and disperse that energy. And, and you try to do it to the best of your ability. Fabulous. Yes, sir. Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. I got you. <laughs> what do you consider success? What does success look like for you in your industry? How do you mm. measure it? That's interesting. That's something I struggle with because I'm, I'm I feel like I'm always continuing to improve. I, you know, I'm always looking for the next thing for success. For me, uh, success is um, a cool thing is when my daughter's going to be wearing a bicycle helmet in the coat de sac and, the, you know, the actual product that we developed um, is protecting her head. And, and, you know, so that's success. Another uh, a thing for me that I think is really important that's overlooked um, as a minority and athlete, um, I think a lot of my, my, my teammates and former football players who um, were athletes, they all call me like, man, that's pretty cool that you're getting into technology, right? And, and I, 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 that's, you know what, that's inspiring, right? That's inspiring. I, I think because, you know, so often now these guys like Kevin Durant and Bond Miller, a lot of guys are getting in technology and investing in them. Um, but just to be, in this, be able to inspire others to say, you know what, post-career, you don't have to, you, you can do, you can be in a tech world. And I, and I want to be an inspiration. Um, and as a, as, a, as a minority, oftentimes, you know, when I'm looking to be an inspire other, other young men in inner cities or kids or people to say, you know what, STEM program, how do we, how do we, I, I just want to, women, I just, you know, because quite honestly, the diversity is not where it needs to be, I believe, in technology. Right. You know, I'm always seeking out minorities and women. You know, actually, I think the ladies do the best job, right? <laughs> right. I, 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 they, I'm looking for that, but you don't see a lot of girl engineers. I'm, you're starting to see more, but, you know, I was, I'm always looking to, because I think that's when true technology happens, when you bring diversity, people from different backgrounds, different genders and everything. So I get excited about thinking about that, building a company where, you know, I can be an inspiration to others, uh, inspire others to do great things, um, and provide a service to others. I believe, I mean, it's, it's one thing to say, you know, I got a tech company, we're gonna make a lot of money. But c can you imagine doing that and, and providing a service and you're watching the technology and you're like, God, we made the game of football safer. That's That'd right. be a legacy. That, that would be something success for me. Huge contribution to the, mm -hmm. to the sport and to the United States economy. Yep. Indeed. Oh. Oh. Sean, thank you so much for being here this morning and spending time with us. This yeah. has been just so fascinating. And I am just totally geeking out. And don't hold it to me that, uh, against me that I went to Clemson. I so know. I know <laughs> we talked about that. What's next for Wimpact? Um, you've made a huge mark in the sports industries. Mm -hmm. You've worked with DOD. Are there other industries you're trying to get into? Yeah. Anything you can talk about? Yeah, the, the biggest industry, 2016, we started working with one of the largest automotive manufacturers in, here out of Detroit. Looking at headliners, um, U.S. military uh, for the advanced combat helmet. So the padding, the padding solution is um, working, and we can provide a lot of applications for different industries, from the automotive space to um, sports technology to where it's military. But the thing that I'm starting to, you know, as you start to look forward down the road for Winpact is, once you have all these different applications out there, and you have that data behind it. One of the things I, I, I want to see what's going to happen in the next three or four years is, and you probably guys see it at the patent office, like all this sensor technology. Yes. The quantified athlete is coming. Now, I think, you know, it hadn't shaken out yet because, you know, just like at the University of Michigan, that school up north, you know, they are Jordan School. <laughs> they have the sensor technology in it, you know, yeah. um, but who owns that data? Does a student athlete own the data? Right. Does University of Michigan own the data? Or does <laughs> Nike and the Jordan brand own that data? So one of the things that's interesting and things that I talked to the NFL and talked to Dr. Crandall about is as we have our modeling capabilities to give us to predict the best 
solution, what happens when you can collect that data from the impacts from the stadium or off the athlete and you can put it back in? So now we get into not only can we customize the solution for the best performance and fit and stuff like that, but it's just really become predictive and it's descriptive for the best. I'm excited about the future of uh, innovation in sports technology. And um, so as we start to collect more data from impacts and you start to put machine learning to that and the machines get smarter and tell you what better materials come out, um, we want to be on the, the forefront of what type of new materials and partner with one of these sensor companies to come up with new. new that's, that's the direction we want to go to. Very yes, exciting. I'm just curious, um, one thing I was curious about, when you go meet with the new clients, the Shuts, the Rydells, mm -hmm. et cetera, how do they value that patent? Do they say, oh, you're protected, yep. I really want to deal with you because I know you got protection, and meaning that they know that they will have to do some type of licensing or something with you versus <laughs> if you just went in now without that good protection. Yeah. And, and the second question I want to know is, have you experienced anybody try to use your technology without trying to deal with the license? Uh, I, I can answer the latter first. Uh, not yet, not to date. We did have a company out of New Jersey who maybe we had to try to use our Winpack name or something like that for a facility, and Cooley was able to handle that nicely. Um, <laughs> nicely, you know, I like to say nicely with the attorneys, right? Yeah. Uh, um, but when you're dealing with the, the big guys, you know, obviously, uh, the patent is the name of the game, right? Because as, as much as they like you, you know, they will love to knock off your technology and different things. So uh, patent is extremely important. One, as a company, our, our foundation is the IP, our, the, the patent and technology. That's who we are as ingredient technology. So when we talk to our customers, we let them know it's patented. And they're excited about that. And I think it's important to those guys because they don't want to see their... their, their um, hockey helmet being knocked off in China somewhere, right? Or, you know, so, because uh, a lot of my clients are global. They have, the, the baseball clients are from China to Japan to South do you, America. Do you actually manufacture it for some of the companies or do you actually license them, yeah. the design, that's, so then they go build it themselves? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So, it, way we look at a business in, in the sports, and I don't know why nobody's calling me, should know on my calendar, but anyway. <laughs> um, we, uh, we consider ourselves an ingredient technology. So mm -hmm. in, in the sports world, with the sports guys, a little more hands-on. Our teams work together. Our engineers will work with their engineers and industrial designers. And we work collaboratively to come up with a solution, one, that fits their price point. And we, so we understand their market. So you can't go in there with an $800 catcher's mask, right? Because, right. you know, this just wouldn't sell. So we work and understand their price points. We understand what they, from, a, from a marketing uh, perspective what they're looking for, whether it's um, um, how they're going to sell it to their customers, whether it's performance, whether how they make it sleeker. So we work with those guys. But so and then once we come up with a design and, and look and features and feel, we have factory partners in China yes. uh, for our sports guys. So we're develop, we're sending the CADs or we're developing with our factories and to deliver the padding system to those guys much like you would at a buckle or something like that. So that's kind of like we build it in our factory relationships, hand it to them, and we get paid. In the automotive space, it's pure licensing. Yes. We work with the, the big guy. We solve for the, their need in the headliner space. They have a tier one partner that we give the know-how to, and, and we get a mailbox check from there. Got it. Licensing model. Interesting. Right there. So. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Uh, thank you for the great panel this morning. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, the game of football, my question has to deal with the, the game of football. It seems mm -hmm. to have changed um, just with um, more understanding of how injuries and, and um, just science, right? So, rules have changed. So, uh, we've got roughing the passer rules last year, the, the weight conversions, uh, more of these, just, just the game, uh, more and more rules mm -hmm. have, have, have accumulated. I, I'm just curious what your thought about the role of technology. Is it the point to make the game stay the same with the same set of rules and just make it, or is it to really to converge between, uh, is it a balance between rules and technology to try yeah. to re redevelop, I guess, the way football should be played? Yeah, I think it's a holistic approach. You know, the NFL will talk about not only do you have to have great technology to, to make and protect the athlete, but rule changes are extremely important for football. Um, the most notable, I think, in the last couple of years, a defenseless player, right? 
if don't hit a guy who's not looking or if the ball is thrown too high, um, you know, that, that was a big rule change. Even the kickoff, you know, so the NFL has a lot of data on where athletes are being injured and what, what plays, whether it's special teams, offense, where it will play. So, you know, kickoff now is pretty much everybody starting at the 20 because they either kick it in the end zone. And I think even Pop Warner is actually taking the kickoff out of youth football where they're starting at the 35 already. So, um, so you have the rule change, you have, um, you have padding protection, rule change, and just, just awareness. I think the medical professionals uh, with the scouts uh, the NFL people who are looking for, for guys to protect them, you know, because as an athlete, we're always taught to be a gladiator. How, you know, I'm not coming off the field. I got to play in this game. We got to win. And, I, and, you know, and guys are getting smarter. Guys are getting smarter and they raise their hand when they get hit. But most of the time, if, if it came down to um, me playing in a playoff game against Kansas City, and I, and I feel a little woozy, but I still can play, and I just need to be out there in a performance, and it's a contract year, guess what the athlete's going to do? They're going to stay out there. So, we, so I think the NFL has done a better job of having medical professionals who are saying, you know what, let's take his helmet, let's take him off the field, um, and just really let him have a total time to recover. And I think that that's, that's one of the, the best things that's happened is the NFL has done a wonderful job. Even college, NCAA, and high school is just – how do we protect the athlete? If you feel any signs, I know I coach my 11-year-old football team, and, they're, and you're taking this concussion test. Like, all right, if you see this sign, take the kid out. Don't yeah. let play. Talk to the parents. So I love that. So it's a holistic approach. Rule change, uh, equipment, and, and just awareness. Brilliant. Yes. As a former uh, Army paratrooper who yep. took way too many shots to the dome, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about uh, what you're doing with the military helmets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The military has been great. You know, um, a lot of you, you, a lot of the innovation that you're starting to see that trickles over into sports. A lot of time comes from the military. Those guys are always looking at advanced technology at the Army Research Lab or or Air Force Research Lab. So, a year ago, we started working with the Natick um, Labs out of Boston, looking at the advanced combat helmet for soldiers. And the first thing we did for the first four years, we built those guys an advanced finite element model. We built them a model so we could theoretically say how the, the helmet was going to perform before we even got into physical testing. So this was the first time that the, the Army had something like that. And they had different bits and pieces of, you know, uh, maybe a shell over here, but didn't have the padding solution modeled out. So we built them, the first year we built them a model that was able to predict some of the scores that we were able to get at the Army Research Lab. The Army came to us with a challenge. They wanted to the current solution protects at 10 feet per second, basically dropping it 10 feet from the ceiling and getting it down 10 feet per second. They wanted a new solution that could protect at 14 feet per, sec feet per second as well as 17, and we were able to solve at 14 to 17 feet. So, and that's, and that's, that's because of our modeling capabilities, what we're doing. So working with the United States Army has been outstanding. You know, some of the things that you're seeing at the Army Research Lab and, and with the engineers and just, just it's, it's been a, it's amazing. And the paratroopers, you know, you know, those guys get, you know, you start to talk about the boots and the pads and the flip and hit the back of their head. So <laughs> that's, a, that's one, of, one of our advisors, General John Wharton, was a paratrooper. He ran that unit. So he always talks about the back of the head and athletes hitting, I mean, uh, soldiers hitting. So Are we, those products deployed to the Army yet? We're working with the Army. So now the, this next year we'll be working over the uh, samples for field testing. Yes. And then from there, we could be deployed. So we're, we're pretty excited to start field testing those this year with the United States Army. Awesome. We had to, we had to solve for it first. <laughs> yep. And so if I go to my local sporting goods store, what can I buy that's wind-packed? Well, you, you, in August, you'll start to see all the baseball products with clients from Under Armour and All Star and Wilson. You'll start to see, and next year, you'll start to see more products in the ski what about the bicycle? Yeah. And cycling, ski and cycling, I love that. Yeah. I, I love that. that. That'd be the helmet I wear now. I won't wear any other sport helmet. I'll be wearing a bicycle helmet, but that's about it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we need to protect your brain. You got to protect your brain, right, so um, as much as possible. Um, so you'll start to see more and more products come on the market. Um, the military, I don't think, unless we have someone active duty, you know, that'd be for the soldiers, yeah. hopefully in 2021, and in automotive. It'll be in your car, uh, but you probably won't see it. That's great. Right. That's great. Right. Well, any other questions? One more. Yes. Uh, 
Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi, uh, thank you for being questions. here. I got uh, two questions. So one in the back first. Oh. Okay, it's all good. Yes, I, I've enjoyed your talk very much, yep. and I'm, you know, uh, delighted in what you're doing. Um, there's a number of soccer players in the audience, mm -hmm. and the worst injuries we've seen are head injuries, especially when two players go to head the ball at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so I've wondered if you've been developing or thought about developing some kind of impact uh, protection for soccer players. Yeah, um, you're absolutely right. I think two years ago, girls soccer was number two in concussions. Um, I always, I always check my, my doctor up front, Dr. Hutchins. She would know. She's, she knows all the concussion data. But uh, Yes, uh, girls soccer and soccer players, uh, we just started um, initially having talks with a, a group out of, out of Europe who's looking at a soccer headband. And I know in soccer, I think they're taking headers out of the game for kids under 14. Um, I think that's a good move. Um, the, the, the thing that we, we look at when we start to look at that industry is, you know, how do we make it where it's a, it's a solution that soccer players want to wear? You know, because the big thing is like, is that going to change the way we head the ball as we get older? And you know, so some of the some of the challenge in certain industries is just getting getting these guys over the hurdles, right? Just getting them over the hurdles of of just wearing protective gear. And uh, I think soccer, uh, the first initial step is to take headers out of the game at a certain age. And I think the second, you will see more and more companies, um, and we we are working with a company on a soccer headband as well. So we're looking at that. Thank you. One, one last question, real quick. Yeah, um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for what you're doing. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Now, my question was, as it relates to your company and the opportunities for interns mm -hmm. to come into your company yep. and learn from y'all what y'all do and just be inspiring to them. Is that available? Yes, yes. We have, um, we have, uh, and, and we made a, a as a small company, we're always looking for new, fresh, young talent. So last year was first year, uh, two years ago was our we had a big intern program. And we probably, I, I think this year we probably had over 100 applications at least for interns um, from Rutgers to Virginia Tech to Rice, um, all the engineering schools. So we are always looking for people to come uh, visit us um, if you want to talk about, I mean, and, and because it's, the amazing thing is we learn about so many different applications. Once people see our patent system and how it works, and we, we always get, did you guys ever think about uh, roller coaster head pads? Like, no, I never thought about that, right? Or then some person, I think the, uh, something else was, you ever thought about the top of crutches? Because I've been wrapping my towel around top of crutches. <laughs> like, no, I didn't think about that one either. Yeah. Yeah, you know? So we are always looking for people to come in um, talk to us about different solutions and applications. Um, if you want to come visit us or you can go to our website, winpack.com, and, and Carter's in the back of the room. You can get her information. And we just tell people just apply to internship and, and the team does a good job of selecting uh, interns. We had a great crop of uh, interns last year. Actually, two of them will be hiring this year from uh, Rutgers and Pitt. So we're pretty excited about the opportunity. Yep. Well, thank you. I think we're just about out of time. I well, want I can you keep are, talking you forever. Are truly yeah, I can keep an talking. I can keep talking. And you're truly a delight, and we're so happy to have you yeah. here today. Thank you so much. Okay.